Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa Podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Mari. Hola y bienvenidos a episodio 18. Welcome to episode 18 of the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast. Have you ever wanted to learn how to dance, visit the Dominican Republic or Cuba, or go to your favorite Latin music artist concert? Well, what if I told you that you could do all of the above in just one event? Now, that's where the Aventura Dance Cruise comes in. Now, this is the world's largest Latin dance cruise. And if you didn't know, Aventura means adventure in English. And that's definitely a great description of this experience. In this episode, I talked to the owner and director of Aventura Dance Cruise, Moshe Rassier, to get a behind-the-scenes perspective on this immersive Latin cultural experience. He's going to tell us all about how Aventura Dance Cruise got started and why it's different from anything else you've ever experienced before. He also shares some language learning advice from his own experience. He has a very diverse background, and he'll talk a little bit about that as well. And at the end of our conversation, I'll come back and give you more information about how you can get a special discount if you're interested in checking out Aventura. So with that, let's get started with the interview with Moshe. Moshe, thank you so much for joining me on the Learn Spanish Con Sasa podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to be here. I want to start off, if you could just tell a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do with the Aventura Dance Cruise. Sure. How much time we have? <laughs> as much as you want to tell us. <laughs> I'll keep it short. I don't want to bore anyone. I moved to Miami back in 2003. I went to school down here, got my bachelor's and master's. Uh, while I was doing that, I, um, I got into the hobby of dancing, social dancing, and also performing as a student. I really liked that. I did it throughout my school time. And eventually when I got done with school and tried my, you know, work, uh, corporate uh, America experience, I really quickly realized that I want to do my own thing. And having dancing as a great hobby at the time and today, I decided to go ahead and open a dance studio in my area where I live, which there was no dance studio at the time around here. That was a lot of fun. I was a young kid owning a dance studio, learning everything that comes with that. And then 2008 happened, a uh, great financial situation, economy, crash, whatever you want to call it. So we, I did a bunch of things to generate extra income to the business at the time from producing events, selling DVDs, private lessons, parties, uh, you name it. We, we did a bunch of things. And one of them was to create an event that at the time, because next door to my dance studio, there was a travel agency promoting cruises and I never been on a cruise before. We decided to put a small event for our dance studio Um, on a cruise ship. Uh, I figured out that if we can manage to have a small room where we can dance and teach some dance lessons and have a good time, there'll be a great vacation for everyone. That little thing turned out to be 472 people, which I didn't expect. Word to mouth, a lot of people that I know just spread the word and brought their students and friends. A lot of friends of mine from the industry wanted to teach, DJ, perform, And then Aventura Dance Cruise became a real thing. Since then, every year, we, I kept on investing more and more time into it to keep on growing. We brought more artists. We put more effort and more into that event. Till eventually it got to be a really big thing. And I stopped what I did with the dance studio. I moved on to focus only on the dance cruise. And we charter our full ship to 2,400 people for the first time in 2013 after five cruises. And since then, we never looked back. We kept on chartering ships. And in 2016, 17, we had two of them, one in LA, one in Miami. Same goes to 2018. And now in 2019, we have two cruises here in Miami, one going to Cuba and one going to DR. 
and it's just been a great, exciting ride, producing events, supporting our community, promoting the culture that we are so crazy about and love so much, and keep on, on having a lot of fun with a lot of fun dancers. Wow, so that's amazing. So you just kind of started off thinking, hey, it'll be fun to do a cruise, and you had 472 people join right off the bat. Right. It was a great idea uh, also for me to go on a cruise because owning a business, you have no time for yourself, definitely not for a vacation. And right. I really wanted to go on a cruise. I've never been on a cruise before. So, yeah, I said, let's take work with me. And <laughs> But that thing became obviously more than that, and um, and thank God for that. I had never been on a cruise either before I went on Aventura Dance Cruise. And I usually tell people, you know, I love to travel, but I'm not really a cruise person. Like I always looked at people that went on cruises like they weren't very adventurous. They wanted everything to be done for them. <laughs> right. So like I would always right. be like, well, I want to fly to the place that I'm going and just kind of experience the culture and the, and the people and be able to talk to people and, and go dancing and do all of that. So I really never had been on a cruise until I heard about Aventura. And I said, whoa, this is a little bit different. So could you talk a little bit about what's the difference between sort of your, like your typical cruise when people think about cruises? I know some people love them, some people hate them, right? But what you all right. created with Aventura is, is really unique. So can you talk a little bit about your motivation to kind of keep it going and what type of experience you want to create for people that that actually attend. First of all, I always recommend all my friends and, and clients to first go on a regular cruise and then come on Aventura Dance Cruise because you cannot go the other way around. The moment you experience a private event like Aventura Dance Cruise, it's really hard to go on a regular cruise and enjoy it. Especially 12 years ago, cruises were more uh, associated with older people they were less exciting but since then the trend of thin cruises kept on going tremendously not just in the dance and latin world but also in in other genres of music and just thin cruises overall mm -hmm. i know there is a yoga cruise i know there is a star Wars cruise i know there is a zumba cruise there's like a lot of different things but but basically for me at the time I was a fan and I'm still a fan of congresses, going to dance events, dance festivals around the country. And I asked myself at some point, what makes it so much fun to go to these events? And it's, it's a very simple answer. Having so many people with common passion under one roof, uh, dancing, everything is very accessible. The dance lessons, the parties, the shows, everything is at the hotel. You get to see people more often. And it's just an amazing experience, which I recommend to today. Now, when I saw the whole cruise thing, I figured that would be like a Congress on steroids, meaning it's, it's the same thing that Congress provides, but so much more intense because of the fact that you're on a ship and you get to see everybody more often. Nobody's going sightseeing. You know exactly where everybody's going to have lunch, dinner, and breakfast, and you're going to get to see them. You get to interact with the artists because they're not leaving the next day. They are staying with you for the weekend. And just the convenience of, of having not just the dance lessons and the parties and the shows in one place, but also everything is included, like your meals, your entertainment, your drinks, travel, your room. Everything is in one simple fee and you're worry free uh, for the rest of the weekend. So that's where we went with that. And then of course, slowly but surely year after year, we added more elements than just being together. Um, exciting destinations, amazing concert artists. We raised up, raised year after year, the level of dancers that are coming on the cruise and never, never looked back. I'm very proud of our dancers and I think they are the like, most exciting things that we have on our cruise, uh, cruises and to hang with them. And I think this is the key. They're actually attending the parties, they're attending the dinners and lunches and like just dining all the time and, and, and being around and being a part of the event and showing up for the VIP parties and showing up for anything that we do on the ship. And it's just very, very exciting to get to know them, to hang out with them, to ask them questions, to dance with them. And again, it's, it's the same concept of what makes Congresses so much fun just a little bit more than that. 
Right, definitely. And it is really cool to be able to see just kind of the artists hanging out where you wouldn't think like if you're at a Congress, sometimes they might just only be in like the VIP section or like if you don't know somebody that knows somebody, you just kind of see them on stage. Right. But on the cruise, right. it's like you get to see people because everyone, like you said, everyone's eating at the same time. Everyone's kind of at the parties. Everyone's hanging out. So you really just get to see like an artist might be in a workshop with you. 100% and I always bring up the fact that we do our own homework as far as who do we hire and do they have the DNA and the personality that we're looking for somebody to be on the ship. Not just a great talent, but also a great personality, right? There's also something about cruises that it's hard to explain that get people to do things that normally they do not do. And for example, I'm just going to mention some of our concert artists. At this point, we had a bunch including Chino Enacho, Tito El Bambino, uh, Jose Alberto El Canario several times, Gilberto Santa Rosa, Victor Manuel. We have so many stories like Victor Manuel after his concert came off stage and just hangs around for an hour just signing and taking pictures with everybody, something that he never does. Gilberto, when he got on the ship, we had a bunch of security people just like guarding him and making sure that he has his space. But he himself said, hey guys, I don't need you, I'm good. And he just walked around and took a bunch of pictures and hang out with people. Seven o'clock in the morning, I went to a meeting on a Friday or Saturday on the cruise and I see El Canario coming off one of our clubs, dancing and having a good time with a bunch of dancers. It's just something that you don't get to see unless you're on that cruise. Wow. Yeah, definitely. And I actually caught El Canario in a workshop about the history of salsa. And we'll get into that too, kind of talk about what's on the itinerary of the cruise. But yeah, he was just sitting there enjoying the workshop. And I just came and said, hey, hey ¿puedo tomar una foto con usted? And he's like, sure, you know? So yeah, it's really cool. Everyone is really accessible. And it's not what you expect normally at an event. You usually expect the artist to be sort of separate from you. So I really do um, think that's something that makes Aventura unique as well. So let's talk about like exactly what happens. Like let's break down like if there is a such thing as a typical day because I know every event is different. What is it that goes on? Like if I was to come on the cruise first time, never been before, what can I expect? What's my my itinerary look like? First, I'm going to start with one of my uh, famous saying that I say every year that the best moment uh, moments of ADC are not on the schedule. And those are the moments when you're not planning anything and you're just hanging out and you take on, you take the elevator to your cabin or you just walk around and you meet people and you hang around around the bar or you just go dancing and nothing that you planned on just, you know, happened and memories forever, right? But um, to answer your question, um, generally speaking, you have dance lessons during the day. You have amazing dance showcase by those great and best dancers from all over the world performing at the theater every evening. Dancing with the Stars or uh, World of Dance style, you know, back to back to back performances. And then at night you have those amazing concerts because we believe in DJs and we have over 24 of them uh, playing over the weekend and they're great. They're the reason why we're dancing nonstop. But also we're supporting live music and we're bringing concerts. Every cruise we have about seven or eight concerts throughout the weekend. So you get to enjoy that. Uh, we do singles meet and greet. Uh, we were trying to uh, incorporate anything that promotes uh, our culture and the Latin culture and the Latin music. So one of the things that we started is having those Sasa history lectures by people with a lot of experience, like Peter and Tamara, which brings so many unique and original stories of how we got to where we are. Also, Eddie Torres, he has a history of Mambo when he shares his experience and people get a chance to sit right in front of him. No stage, no nothing, ask questions, hang around and hear uh, about his experience and more things like that so people can engage and learn more. We do, we do speed dancing, which is basically like the same concept of speed dating, just not necessarily dating. People go and every 30 seconds, 40 seconds, we ask people to dance with people that they, they never dance before or no so people get a chance to dance with a bunch of people in a very short time and get to know them we have them with stickers and their name on them so you know people get to meet more people faster so it's just fun you know we run yeah. games we have competition we have a casino tournament we have different we have miss and mr adc um we give away prizes at the theater we have vip parties it's just non-stop so this is the beauty of it. We, we, we like to call it Disneyland for dancers. You open the schedule and there's so many options uh, to do and you pick whatever you feel like, uh, all levels. This is pretty much it. 
So I like that you said Disneyland for dancers. So a uh, question I have. So I know that everyone sort of has a different level of dance skill, right? And you mentioned earlier sort of this mm-hmm. dancing with the stars. And I know I have friends that they know that I dance salsa and they're like, oh, like I would love to dance, but it's so intimidating, right? They don't want to like take that first step. So would you say that if I was a complete beginner, right, maybe single, I don't have someone that I dance with as like a dance partner, I'm not really confident about my dance skills, can I still go on the cruise and have a good time? A hundred percent. And when I say Disneyland for dancer, just dancers just like Disney always focus on a vacation for the entire family. Um, we're focusing on a vacation for all spectrum of dance, uh, people in all levels, uh, we have a boot camp for beginners at the very beginning, and we also uh, having classes uh, for intermediate dancers and advanced dancers. Also for people that don't feel like dancing and they just want to learn about the history like we talked about before. And again, just like Disney, and we talked about uh, the vacation for the entire family, it's also for all ages. So also when we focus on the parties, we have the crazy party at the back of the ship for people that want to go, you know, and, and dance if it's hip hop or whatever it is. But we also have at the same time, at any given time, we have salsa, we have bachata, we have old school mambo, we have a funny all star set, we have merengue, sometimes we have cha cha or hustle, um, and we have those top 40 mainstream parties for people that just want to take a break. You know, you go on a four days, five days uh, cruise. Sometimes you want to hear something for a moment, for two, three hours, that is not Latin music. We have that as well. We do our 80s parties. Uh, we have scenes every night. We keep spicing things up. And it's just a lot of fun to just let loose and, and you know, participate in all these events and, um, you know, enjoy life. Have a true vacation. Yeah, definitely. And um, so could you tell us a little bit then about the cruises that you have planned for this year? There's Cuba and there's Dominican Republic. So can you tell us, one, the dates for the upcoming cruises um, and two, why you chose those locations this year? Yeah, 2019 19 is definitely a, a, one of the most, if not the most exciting year for us. Um, we managed to get two of the most desired destinations that we always wanted to go as a cruise, as a company with our family, with our dancers, and we got both of them in one year. We're going to Cuba, being the first Royal Caribbean charter to go to Cuba, uh, and we're super excited about that. I mean, just imagine the experience, not just going to Havana, going to Cuba, doing all the shore excursions, but also visiting with 2,800 dancers. So everywhere you go in Cuba, whatever shore excursion you take, whatever restaurant you're going to visit in Havana, you have all of your dancers around you. So this is super, super excited, exciting. And um, and then we're going to the Dominican Republic, Ember Cove, on, uh, in November. And for both cruises, we got amazing concert artists like uh, uh, Hector Acosta and Torito and Oscar de Leon and Grupo Extra and more artists like that. So... Um, very excited. Two very exciting cruises to two destinations that we always wanted and never went to. And um, and yeah, the, the hype, the excitement is, is off the chart at this point. Yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, I think the tie-in to me for the culture is not only are you in the cruise where you're having this immersive experience, but then to actually go to the places where the music comes from, right? The home of Bachata in the Dominican Republic and then going to Cuba, which has a long history um, with salsa. So it's really exciting to be able to not only just sort of, especially as, as someone that may be traveling from Canada or the U.S., that just kind of heard about the music and hasn't actually been to those places, but to sort of go there with this whole experience. I think is just an awesome idea and I'm really excited too about um, about those locations and I've been to both before I've been to both uh, Havana and I've also been to DR a few times but I think going on an experience like this where you've got sort of the dancers with you and you're not worried about you know am I going to go to the right place do I know like the right clubs to go to you you're kind of bringing the party with you so 100% uh, for years we we went to the Bahamas we went to Mexico we had amazing beach parties sun dancing, sunrise parties, sunset parties, everything you can just imagine. But now adding to that, um, those amazing locations with so much history, um, that really uh, blows our mind away. Um, This is a a true all-around vacation and dance experience um, in one weekend. Oh, and and both cruises, we added an extra day 
we used to go Friday to Monday. And, you know, they were great. But by the time you got on the ship, you had to pack and get off the ship, right? And that extra day, now that you go from Thursday to Monday, adds so much. You have another full day of dancing, of, of workshops, of shows, of vacation. And that also is very exciting. Very cool. And how much time do you actually spend on the islands? Like when you're taking the, the cruise to Cuba and going to DR, like how much time do you spend on the ship and how much time do you actually have to explore once you get there? For Cuba, we're getting there at 8 o'clock in the morning and we need to be back on the ship at one, by 1 o'clock at night. So we have a full, full day. We, we will have short excursions during the day and then at night we're going to do more exciting stuff like going to very special locations there like Club Tropicana and as we sail away from Cuba to, to see that view and then that, that will be something special. Uh, DR, if I'm not mistaken, we're getting there also at 10 o'clock in the morning and we leave at 8 or 9. But still more than enough time to explore, to enjoy and come back from the ship and continue to um, do what we do. Oh, so it sounds like there's a, a full day there. You get to kind of uh, get to experience the islands there. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, all right. So I want to ask you one little thing about behind the scenes, because I know you do a lot uh, to kind of capture everyone's experiences on the cruise. Um, but I want to know from you. So I know there's so many moving pieces to playing on a huge event like this and doing the cruises, the destinations, thing with the artists, uh, the dancers. Uh, what's one of the most surprising things that's happened behind the scenes that people don't really know about uh, that you've had to deal with that uh, that goes into the event or even something that you thought was going to go really, really wrong? <laughs> you thought was going to be a disaster, but it turned out okay. Oh, wow. Um, we're going to need more time. <laughs> <laughs> Look, um, event production and show business in general they always bring a lot of surprises and a lot of situations as is that's what they call it show business right um back in 2013 which was the only time when we couldn't make it to an island people stayed on the ship and we had a blast uh when we were a group we we got off and it was raining and people kept on dancing at the beach party and it was one of the best moments and we keep on evolving like that and making sure that the crews just keep on getting better and better so I want to switch gears now just a little bit and talk about language. Um, and I know that there's so many people in the Latin dance community that love to dance, right? But they may not be Latino and they don't know what the words are in the songs, right? They're listening to the songs, they're dancing, but they have no idea in some cases like what the songs are about, which on one level doesn't matter, right? Because you're connecting with the feeling of the, of the music and you're dancing. But at the same time, when you want to kind of go a little further, like you talked about really promoting the culture and getting people involved and, and really being immersed in and promoting the culture. So tell us a little bit about your background and where you're from and what languages uh, you speak. Sure. Um, I was born and raised in Israel. My, both of my parents are not from Israel. They met there and they stayed there. My mom is Argentinian. My dad is Turkish with a Spanish background. So he spoke Spanish as well. Ladino, like they used to call it. And um, I grew up in a house that I heard Spanish all the time. My grandparents, um, my family, my extended family spoke always Spanish. Me, myself, I never spoke a word, but I heard it all the time. So it was in me, but I never got a chance to use it. And when I moved to Miami, and a little bit before that, when I traveled to Argentina to be my family, that's where everything came out. It, I know it's going to sound funny, but if you really want to learn Spanish, just move to Miami. <laughs> you know, Miami, <laughs> uh, there's a joke around here that the Miami is uh, the most developed uh, la uh, Latin country or South American country in the world. Uh, again, jokes aside, everybody speaks Spanish here. So it's so <laughs> easy to to practice and and to really, because this is what it, it's all about, practicing, 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 right? So you can read, you can go to school, you can take a class, but then you need to speak and you need to make mistakes and you need to sound like like funny, uh, but that's just like dancing. You, you need to go through it in order, in order to learn. And when I had to meet people, go dancing or do negotiation with Latin concert artists or Latin dancers that doesn't don't speak a word in English, you make your way through, right? So, so practice, learn. Now, you know, it's so easy uh, in a sense that you have YouTube, 
you have online access to so many different classes and you can learn in so many ways. When you hear a song that you like, you don't need to guess anymore. You can just go on iTunes or any other platform and read the lyrics. And it's just a matter of putting your mind into it and, and practice. It's a beautiful language. 2020 is right around the corner and there's a stat out there that by 2020, a third of this country is going to speak Spanish. You know, definitely something that I highly recommend to everybody. If you're into the Latin music, it's even easier. You're already listening to the music. One thing that I did, both with English and Spanish, you need to commit, meaning it doesn't matter what language you speak and it's easier for you. Try to focus on Spanish if you want to learn Spanish. In, in a way, for example, watch only Spanish TV at home watch movies in Spanish or put subtitles, uh, listen to Spanish music and translate and go over them. Practice, practice, practice. Wherever you go, speak with your friends, uh, speak with anyone that speaks Spanish and ask them, hey, I know it's much easier for me to, you know, communicate in English or whatever language. Let's focus on, you know, make an effort and practice my Spanish. And, and that's it. And before you know it, one, two, three, four years, you're fluent. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned something earlier when you talked about growing up in a, in a household where you always heard Spanish, but you never spoke it, um, or you didn't have the need to speak it. And I think it's really interesting because I know I have a lot of friends that are raising children. They want them to speak English and Spanish, but because they may be in the U.S., if they're not in Miami, <laughs> like you said, it's really difficult to get people to find the need for the language. And what I'm hearing you say is when you move to Miami, not only from where you were, but also from just having to talk to people wanting to connect with people, wanting to do business, you really created a need for yourself to have to use Spanish. So even though you were familiar with it, you had been exposed to it, uh, you really weren't learning or really weren't using it day to day. Um, and I think that's encouraging. Okay. So for people out there who may think that, oh, I have to be learning you know, Spanish from when I'm a baby and otherwise I'll never get it, right? Like I'll never be fluent because I didn't learn it from when I was little. I think you're proving that even when you grow up exposed to it, if you don't take that initiative for yourself, that you could still lose it and not really pick up the language. A hundred percent. And it was a need, but it was also a want. I wanted to speak Spanish in Miami. It was just a great thing. And besides, I love the language. Uh, and I have so many friends that speak Spanish. For all of my fellow uh, parents out there that, that they have kids and they might not respond to you in Spanish or anything like that, uh, just remember the one thing that kids don't want to be is to be different. And I was just like that uh, around my friend. I hate it when my mom spoke to me in Spanish. I want you to speak, you know, like what everybody else speak. I don't want to be different. Kids don't want to be different. But if you stick to it at home or everywhere you go and you speak to your kids in the language that you desired for them to know, it, it's going in. Slowly but surely, they get it. They, they, they keep it inside. And, and hopefully one day they're going to start using it. Um, so don't give up if your kids don't want to reply to you back in Spanish or any other language you're trying to teach them. Yeah, and you also speak Hebrew too, right? Right. Growing up in Israel, I grew up speaking Hebrew, again at home Spanish, and then when I moved to Miami, I also got my English. So I'm going to switch now to do our quick fire round, and I'm just going to ask you a few questions in Spanish, just for you to answer off the top of your head. Uh, pregunta número uno. ¿Cuál es tu canción favorita en español? Perdóname a Gilberto Santoro. Ah, ok. Buena canción. ¿Y quién es tu artista favorita? Mark Anthony. ¿Y cuál es tu palabra o frase favorita en español que no tenemos en inglés? Buen provecho. Buen provecho. Ah, sí, porque creo que es más como francés. Bon appetit. Una pregunta más. ¿Qué es algo que todo el mundo cree que es la verdad, pero tú no estás de acuerdo? Tienes que pensar un poquito en eso, ¿no? <ríe> sí. Hay menos mal en ese mundo de, de que el mundo está pensando y eh, hay que pensar más positivo que negativo y que viva la salva. Sí, que viva la salsa. <ríe> That's a good note to end it on. On that note, um, I'm going to close out. I want to thank you so much for your time, Moshe, for sharing with us about this wonderful experience that you all and your team has created with the Aventura Dance Crews. Um, I just want to give you an opportunity if folks want to get more information, where can they find you on social media um, and how can they sort of stay in touch and get more information about Aventura? 
sure, Moshe Rossier, that's my website, dot com, Aventura Dance Crew, social media, at Aventura Dance Crew on pretty much all platforms, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and even Snapchat, we're ABC fam there, I'm sorry. And um, just support it, Aventura Dance Crew, that's our email, our phone number right there, 877-418-3931. Um, very easy to, to get a hold of me and um, just go to any uh, good and big congress out there and dance and you're going to see me right there too. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Oh, and one thing I think we forgot, what are the dates for the cruises for 2019? So for Cuba mm-hmm. and Dominican Republic, what are the dates? Yes, uh, Cuba is coming right around the corner. Uh, we're going on June 6th to the 10th. Uh, 2019. It's a Thursday to Monday, June 6th to the 10th. And uh, for November, we're going to DR on November 14th to the 18th in 2019. And for 2020, we're working right now on our cruises for that year. And um, we have some very exciting surprises. Okay, perfecto. Okay, thank you so much for taking the time out to join me on Learn Spanish con Salsa. Thank you. Muchas gracias y suerte. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Moshe. Now, I have to say, as I mentioned during our conversation, I attended Aventura Dance Cruise back in 2017, and it was definitely nonstop. There were tons of things you could do. There were people to talk to. And if you want to practice your Spanish, you'll definitely have an opportunity to do that at the destination and even with the people on the ship. It is a pretty bilingual event. You'll find workshops that are in English or Spanish, but there's always someone there sort of translating and helping out if that's the case. Um, And everyone's just generally in a good mood. So it's not hard to start a conversation with someone. And even if you're a complete introvert, you know, and you're not used to sort of being outgoing and talking to people you don't know, when you're in this experience, like when you're in a workshop, you naturally have something to talk about. So it's not going to seem as scary or intimidating. Um, Even though there's a lot of people on the cruise, there's a lot of different activities. So you'll find that you'll have small groups of people to talk to and it won't be always like one huge party. So I did promise at the beginning of the episode that I would let you know how you can get a special discount if you want to go to Cuba in June or to the Dominican Republic in November. Just go to AventuraDanceCruise.com and select which location that you want to go to and use the discount code Spanish con Salsa when making your reservation. So that's Spanish, C-O-N, and the word Salsa, and you'll get up to $100 off the cruise depending on which cabin you select. Now, if you're interested in going to Cuba, I'd hop on that right away because the last time I checked, it's almost sold out. I believe it was like at 92% when I checked last, and by the time you hear this, it may be you know, more than that. So definitely check out AventuraDanceCruise.com to get all of the details. So that is it for this episode of Learn Spanish Con Salsa. As always, I hope that this has helped you get one step closer from being a beginner to bilingual. And I want to just give you one quick reminder. Today is the last day of the April giveaway. So if you want to be eligible for the prize, click the link in the show notes and leave a review on iTunes. We love to hear from you. We love to get your ratings and reviews. It lets us know that you're enjoying what you're listening to and also what you want to hear more of on the show. So learn Spanish con salsa.com forward slash aventura to get the notes for this episode. And you'll see a link in there that says leave a review and it'll take you right to iTunes automatically. So you don't have to go search for it and try to figure that out. Okay. So learn Spanish con salsa.com forward slash aventura. And you'll also see some more information about the cruises. So you can select which one you want to go to. You see a list of artists that'll be in Cuba versus Dominican Republic. And you'll really get to get an idea for what the itinerary for Aventura Dance Cruise is for this year okay so that's it for me que tengas un buen día adios thank you for listening to the learn spanish con salsa podcast at learnspanishconsalsa.com